All right, guys, welcome back to WCCF Tech TV, and it's been entirely too long since we've seen a video card review. But with the current landscape of things, it looks like it may be a while yet. Even though we're still anticipating to seeing new GeForce cards right around the corner, still a likelihood it could be some time. And with graphics card prices finally coming down, and us not having reviewed this card in well over a year, actually last April, I believe, this is the Sapphire RX 570 4GB model, the Nitro Plus. And this was done roughly 11 months ago. This is the PNY Accelerate OC GTX 1060 3GB model. Now, I know before we even get started, enough people are going to complain about having 3GB, but that's uh, not the point of this video. What the point here is, with these cards getting more reasonably priced, how are they performing in more modern titles? Most reviews for these cards are showing them with Grand Theft Auto, Prey was probably one of the latest games that came out when these cards were reviewed. So what we did was back up the clock to see what video games have come out for the PC since this launch, and what we had in our library, and wanted to see how they perform today. Now we are still using our older test bench now, I say older now because the Ryzen 2000 series has come out, but we're still sporting the Ryzen 7 1700 at 4GHz with 16GB of DDR4-3200 RAM. And well, either one of these video cards and they are placed on the MSI X-Power Gaming Titanium. So before we get into the actual results, let's talk about the cards themselves. So on one hand we have the GTX 1063GB from PNY, this is their Accelerate model, it's rocking 1,152 CUDA cores with a 1797 boost clock. Now, to be quite honest, the boost clock sits more along the lines of 1,910 megahertz. And the memory is, of course, 3 gigabytes. I, I know, I know. But it is pushing at 8,000 megahertz. So that is the GTX 1063 gigabyte. And over on the other side, we have the Nitro Plus RX. 574 gigabytes, so that's got 2048 stream processors with a boost clock up to 1325 megahertz, featuring 4 gigabytes of video RAM running at 6000 megahertz. Now, of course, both cards are overclockable and can be overclocked, but we ran them out of the box settings for these tests. Speaking of the test, we have six titles being tested. The first one being a synthetic and the rest being games that were, have come out in the last 11 months into 2018. So the first test, of course, would be 3D Mark Time Spy, being a DirectX 12 test, and it is, um, well, it's running at 1440p, which is a little bit out of the league for these cards. But they come in neck and neck, within 12 points difference of each other on the GPU score. So that should give you kind of an indication of what should, we should see going forward. So going in the first game, which is the most recent, we're going to look at Far Cry 5. Now Far Cry 5 shows both cards coming in at the same average FPS run under the Ultra preset. However, the 0.1% lows are a bit lower on the GTX 1063 GB, and I would imagine the VRAM is a bit of culprit there on that one. So it's good to see both cards being able to run this title fairly competently at 1080p. Now the next test is Wolfenstein 2, that's at 1080p, of course it's running Vulkan and we're running in Ultra settings. Looks like Nvidia has done some work on their drivers because this is a pretty close race here, both within 5 FPS of each other, both well over 100 FPS at 1080p Ultra and 1% lows are neck and neck, but the 570 does take a little bit of a hit on the 0.1% lows. Now moving into the next title is Assassin's Creed Origins. Now we're running it using the in-game benchmark at very high settings and what we see here is, well, you can definitely tell Assassin's Creed Origins favors the green team on this one with a considerably higher average FPS and a much more acceptable low uh, 1% FPS, so good show on there. Moving into the next title is Middle Earth Shadow of War. Now it's pretty much, uh, well, it take it or leave it because they both pretty much pull out the exact same numbers there at 1080p on ultra settings. And moving into the last game which is Final Fantasy 15. And I just want to make it a note that we are not using the benchmark. So the benchmark is not what's being used here but we are using the playable demo and it's the first mission that we're running from the auto garage into a small fight and then ending with a cutscene at a structure that you can view out there. So you can see here 
that even though this is a title that tends to prefer NVIDIA cards at 1080p, very high, you're gonna want a little bit more VRAM than three gigabytes. So there you have it. That is both of these cards, whichever way you wanna put them on the screen, that is both of these cards in later games than what was originally tested. Now there have been, you have seen tests and people reviewing something like the 1070 Ti, so a lot of these higher end cards, they got some love recently, but not a whole lot's been done down in this segment, and we felt it was very important to bring that to you guys. So that's all we have for you today. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV, and we hope to catch you in the next video.